Okay, hello everybody, welcome to my thesis defense. I'm Yu. And um, so uh, before I start, I would like to thank all of you being here and also Frank connecting with me remotely. Uh, so the title today is called uh, An Ensemble Approach for News Recommendation Based on Contextual Banded Algorithm. So it's all about news, news. So when a user lands on a certain news page, uh, we would like to give some recommendations on the right side. Um, the structure of today's presentation is formalized like that. Um, at first, we would introduce some background like uh, recommender system and news recommendation and also propose our research questions. And then we would introduce, explain some background, the contextual banded algorithms and some of the evaluation metric used in the news recommendation and in the third part I'll explain the approach I use in my thesis and in the next part I will show you my evaluation results with several uh, evaluation metrics and last I will conclude the whole thesis. Um, so let's go to the first part a uh, recommender system is an uh, information uh, filtering technique uh, which can make suggestions for something that a user might be interested in, such as a movie or a piece of music. Um, uh, one commonly used uh, method in that field is called content-based filtering, uh, in which recommendation is based on users and items attributes. Uh, for example, like suggest a movie to a user based on his preference uh, on a certain director. So the disadvantage of the method is it will continuously recommend similar items based on user's profile and in that way decrease the diversity and the serendipity of the recommendation. And another method used is called collaborative filtering, in which recommendation is based on ratings or users' past behaviors of the users. Um, uh, the cons is it would continuously it would face a code start problem. So when there are some uh, new items, uh, will have little chance to be, to be recommended, and it's also hard for like to it also hard to give new users a valid recommendation. So um, we're wondering are those methods works also for the news recommendation field. Um, so let's step further into the news recommendation field. In news recommendation, there is a rampant changing item side. Uh, news articles are created and updated continuously, and news articles has a very short life cycle. And also, uh, some systems do not allow users, uh, do not require users to uh, log in or sign up or log in. So we do not have any, sometimes we do not have any user's profile available. Um, and there are some weather problems. It means that users' interests will change too fast. They are easily attracted by the popular news articles. So the problem of the content-based filtering is it would continuously recommend uh, news articles of the similar content, but news articles may tend, tend to be unpopular or outdated. Uh, and um, in collaborative filtering from the item side, uh, it would face a continuous co-star problems because there are always new items coming and, and also the sparsity problems because users always interact with popular news articles. So the user item metric is pretty sparse to provide, uh, uh, provide like uh, reliable recommendations. So, um, uh, before we step further into that field, uh, let's have a look about uh, have a look at the Cliff News Real Challenge, uh, which is uh, a news recommendation evaluation lab or thesis 
is partially based on. Um, it, it requires participants to provide effective real-time news recommendations. And there are two tasks in the challenge. In the live task, participants are required to generate real-time user a uh, real-time news recommendation in, in an online scenario within a uh, time limits. And in the replay task, the replay task reproduce online scenario by replaying the log data recorded from the online scenario. And with the two tasks, we're able to evaluate our news recommender with millions of real-world users. So in that news real scenario, we found that popularity-based recommender works really well because users care about pop popular news articles and the complexity of the algorithms pretty low to be able to give recommendation within a time limit. And also there's some ensemble approach proposed in that field. Uh, for example, um, uh, like, uh, in that, in their work, uh, they propose some um, some delegation models to delegate news uh, news uh, news news articles based on the context. For example, if the news article comes from the news portal A, we delegate to uh, to algorithms A because algorithms A uh, shows best performance uh, in that news portal. So we, we also consider the same idea, but we'd like our delegation model to be updated continuously um, with the user's feedback, namely user's click behaviors. So here comes our main research questions. Um, is there a way in which the delegation strategy is able to update continuously uh, based on user's feedback so that it can choose the appropriate recommender to serve the recommendation each time during the online news recommendation. Um, we found one way to serve that purpose is called uh, multi-armed bandit algorithms. Uh, the algorithms is originally uh, used in the probability theory in which a gambler at the role of slot machine has to decide um, in which way to play the slot machine in order to maximize the final rewards from the slot, slot machine. So in our case, we have users feedback and what we'd like to maximize is to maximize the recommender's performance or in our case, it can be defined as a click through rate. And our sub-research question is, uh, can a multi-armed bedded algorithm combined with context help to build a better delegation strategy in the online news recommendation? And further, what kind of context can be exploited and how the context is combined? And is it possible for the proposed delegation model to run online in order to serve the recommendation request in the online news recommendation scenario. Namely, we need to provide the recommendation response within the time limits. So let's go to the background part. Uh, uh, what is uh, multi arm bandit algorithms? So here are some technical terms. Uh, here the arms refers to options can be chosen and in our case, it's it's different news recommenders because we like to like uh, uh, delegate uh, news from different based on its context, like from different news portals to different news recommenders. Uh, and rewards is measure of success, and in our case, we define it as users' feedback or their yeah. click behavior. And the bandit is is a collection of arms. And each time uh, in our settings, each arm, each recommender will be chosen multiple times. And each time, the cho each time, uh, each time we we chose the recommender is called 
a play or a trial. And the main concern of the multi-armed bandit algorithms is it has to balance the exploitation and exploration. Uh, uh, exploitation means each time the bandit algorithm choose the the uh, choose the arms with the highest expected reward based on its past experience and exploration is other way around. So in our case, exploitation is each time we choose a news recommender with the highest click-through rate. Um, one simple uh, algorithm is called Epsilon Grady. So Epsilon here is a hyperparameter used to balance uh, exploration and exploitation. And each time it will choose the arms with the highest reward so far at probability one minus epsilon. And another method we consider is um, upper confidence bound, uh, in which it considers the estimated reward and how much it knows about the arms. Um, here, here, this part is is the confidence bound part, and and the arms, the recommenders explored less in past, uh, explored less in, based on the past experience will have a higher chance to be chosen. So it will have a higher confidence bond. And the third algorithm we consider is the Thompson sampling. Uh, Thompson sampling models the probability distribution of each arms reward. So each time it will, um, so if in our case we are, uh, we are our, our reward is a binary value. So when the, the value, when the reward is a binary value, a Bern <coughs> Bernoulli bandit is, is implemented for the Thompson sampling. So each time we will draw a sample from, from the beta distribution of each arm and, and then place arms with the largest sample value in trial T. And after observing the reward of the play, we update the algorithms itself. So um, what is the contextual bandit algorithms? It's, uh, the basic idea is to combine context and multi on the bandit algorithms. So what is context? Context can our side information available by our hand when we were going to make uh, we were going to make a uh, recommendation. Uh, for example, like when doing some new uh, doing some advertisement recommendation some advertisements are more attractive to young users. Here, the age is a kind of context. And in our case, the context is encoded in the incoming recommendation request, and we can extract it, the context from the incoming recommendation request. Uh, the first context we consider is news polos, and we can, see th we can further uh, represent the context features, the context into a feature vectors. And to combine the context, the first method we use, uh, the first method is called context prefiltering, in which a multi-armed bandit model, the algorithm we talked before is built for each context. Um, here we use the three algorithms and the context modeling. So in that method, we assume there is a relationship between the expected reward and the context. So let's look uh, in detail at the contextual bandit algorithms. So the algorithms assume there is a linear relationship between the expected reward and the context. And each time we choose the arms with the highest final score of the two. Uh, the first part is expected payoff, and the second part is standard deviation of the expected payoff. Here, XGE alpha is the context context information of ARM alpha that we can use uh, for the recommendation. And we have done with the contextual banded algorithm. So 
what is our evaluation metric. So for the evaluation, we make use of the task provided by the new serial challenge. Uh, so as we mentioned before, the, in the live task, uh, a certain participants are asked to generate a certain number of recommendations within a time limit and in a valid format. So here, the first metric we consider is the response time. So the recommendation has to be given in the response time. And another metric is the online CTR, which is equal to the ratio of the number of clicks from the recommendations to the number of recommendation requests sent to, a, a, to our recommender. And in the replay task, um, the replay task, uh, the replay task reproduce the online scenario uh, through a simulator by replaying the data uh, to our recommender. So uh, after receiving that recommendation request, we would be able to get back the recommendation response. Uh, the problem is. Here, users cannot see the real recommendations, so how to measure uh, whether the recommendation is successful or not. So here, we consider if the user interacts with the recommended items in the next 10 minutes, uh, we regard that recommendation as a successful recommendation, and offline CTR is equal to the number of successful items recommended to the total number um, of items recommended. So another evaluation metric we consider is catalog coverage. Uh, here is a figure. It shows the distribution of impression counts over the whole set of news, news articles. The x-axis, um, uh, the y-axis uh, shows how many times a news article has been visited. And news articles with the high impression counts are put at the top position. So, and, and different news portals are represented by different domain ID. So we can see a few news articles have very high impression counts here. And uh, users are not uh, always interested in the popular news articles from the perspective of the long tail. And we'd like to evaluate our system performance on recommending items in the long tail. So the coverage measures the fraction of items which the recommender would recommend to the total item set. It's equal to the total number of distinct items uh, recommended uh, to the total number of uh, distinct items the users have ever interact with. So um, how does our approach look like? Um, here is our recommendation server. So we have recommendation requests from the uh, online, the ORP platform, which is used for, uh, for the recommend, uh, for redirect uh, the online recommendation request to diff to diff to the participants in the news real challenge, and also we can have recommendation requests from the online sim uh, offline simulator, and the re and the a recommender client is used to serve is said to serve the communication purpose, like to extract the. Uh, messages from the data stream and then delegate, delegate the messages to the delegation model. And after receiving the uh, messages, the delegation model would delegate the request to appropriate recommenders. And we also have some uh, log messages re response and also we have some uh, we can ob observe some users' behaviors. We have all those best information and we use that information to find the reward and to use that reward to update our delegation model. Um, 
So the underlying recommender algorithm used here first is a recent recommender, which recommend the most recently requested news articles, and the past recommender, given the news articles that users currently reading, recommend the most popular news articles. Uh, requesting next by the users here, the popularity is a combination of the click behavior and impression behavior. Uh, in our case, a click behavior means users click on certain recommendation, and impression behavior means um, user lands on a news web page. So the two is different. So because of the difference, we we propose two other. Uh, recommender algorithms, the click algorithms, the popularity is similar to past, but the popularity algorithm considers only the clicks, and impression algorithms similar to past, but the popularity algorithm considers only the impressions. And we also have some popularity and category based recommender. So basically, it means if uh, if you are currently currently reading a uh, news articles from the sports dome from the sports uh, uh, category. It will also recommend a uh, news articles from the uh, uh, from the sports category uh, instead of any other categories. So, uh, mm, uh, what kind of content can we use? Uh, the first context we consider here is is domain, so it means different news uh, news portals because um, because we have news recommendations from different different news website, different news portals, and and they are categorical feature by itself. And to use that categorical features, we further encode it into them encoded them into feature vectors using one hot encoding. And another context we consider here is user domain impressions. So it's a numerical value by itself and can also be extracted into uh, extracted from the from the incoming recommendation request and we also further uh, uh, like transfer it into some categorical features and encode it into uh, the feature vectors. Uh, you can see from the two figures that different recommenders performs different in different uh, based on different contexts, uh, in different domains or with different uh, user domain impressions. So, with the context, we are able to build our delegation model. Uh, Using the two methods we mentioned before, the context free filtering method and the context modeling method. So, in context pre filtering method, we build a delegation model for each context. The for the for the context domains, we have three different uh, cat categorical features, uh, categorical value, and here we use uh, the epsilon grade used to be one times assembly the three algorithms and and next method we use is context modeling in which context is integrated uh, directly into the delegation model here we use the two contexts the domain information and the user domain impressions and the algorithm we use here is linear UCB so one thing still missing is uh, we have now is the reward. So uh, basically, as we mentioned, uh, in our case, we defined the reward as click behaviors. Um, so the thing is, um, in real world settings, there would be hundreds of incoming recommendation requests uh, between a recommendation and a corresponding reward. So how to deal with that? Um, so uh, it means that in our case, the feedback is delayed. Uh, so it's unrealistic to suspend the delegation model uh, before receiving the reward or, or to update the delegation model each time after receiving a reward. So we have some batch update and assignment scheme. Uh, with that scheme, the whole recommendation process is is uh, done in batches, 
and the rewards are only collected at end of each bench uh, and after um, like after we have the reward at end of each batch, the delegation model is able to update and also pre-assign a list of recommenders for the recommendation requests in the next batch to save the delegation time. Um, and as for our evaluation part, uh, we evaluate our recommender performance with several evaluation metrics we mentioned before. So here are our evaluation settings. We have the evaluation, ER online evaluation and online evaluation. And the thing is, in the online evaluation, the, uh, the, the data volume is, is pretty, uh, the data volume is small, and which, which is not, so with that small volume, we're not able to update our delegation model. So we built a delegation model from offline data set. Um, so, uh, for the evaluation part, we like to focus our uh, evaluation results in the near online scenario. Uh, in the near online scenario, the new serial challenge provided us with a data set, a month data set. And here are some summaries. We can see that about, uh, like about 70% of the recommendation requests of the messages is from the spot one domain and about 17% of the um, messages is from the, uh, about 90% of the messages is from the uh, three domains. So in our case, we would also like to focus on the three domains. And for the evaluation part, we evaluate our recommender using a three-day data in which a one-day data is used to prevent uh, the code star problem of the recommender and uh, the other two days data are used for the evaluation purpose. Um, uh, the data set, the three day data set contains uh, about 20 million messages and to support the batch update we also split the data set into a smaller data set. Um, as for our experiment settings, uh, we first uh, in our first settings we 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 uh, we just implement the five recommenders, and uh, no delegation strategy is built. Uh, it serves as a baseline recommenders, and also we build another baseline uh, in which the delegation strategy uh, is implemented. Um, it is implemented based on the randomness. It means uh, each time when there is a news recommendation, news recommendation request comes, uh, we'll delegate that recommendation request to a random news recommender, and we we'll also build the other. And for for the contextual banded uh, based uh, uh, delegation strategy, we use the two method, the context pre-filtering and context modeling. Um, so here are our evaluation results regarding the CDR. We can see that rec recent, recent recommender shows uh, uh, overwhelming performance in the sports one domain. And, and also, as we mentioned before, because about 70% of the messages is from, uh, uh, of our, from our data set is from that domain. So this, uh, this, the, CTR the average CTR is affected by the CTR performance in the sports one domain. And here is our evaluation results from the context for filtering, filtering model. Uh, here the, the, count, the algorithm is formatted as the algorithm used, the hyperparameter used, and the batch size used. Here we tried two different batch size. Uh, one batch contains about 300,000 messages and another batch size is a batch uh, with uh, 100 and 1,000 messages. And 
we can say that um, the our delegation model outperforms the random baseline, um, and uh, for the epsilon Brady algorithms, uh, smaller epsilon value seems to bring good results. And when we look at UCB1, we can say it performs good in the sports one domain, but shows worse performance in the tester and the domain. So uh, the result is a little bit unexpected because at first we think uh, UCB1 explores uh, the recommenders, explores the best recommenders uh, um, with the confidence bound. So is somehow like it falls under the guidance. Uh, but later on we found that it may be because the UCB, in UCB1 the heavy parameter used to balance the exploration and exploitation is already fixed in that domain. So in, uh, it's already fixed so the lower performance can, low performance can, so, so that uh, lead to a low performance. And as for the evaluation results from the context modeling model, uh, we found that it also outperforms the baseline, the random baseline, and it also shows a general uh, better overall performance when comparing to the context pre-filtering. And we can see the best performance is achieved by these recommenders. So it has the highest average CTR, even when comparing to the single recommenders. And the actually the highest CTR is not uh, is not um, is is due to its high performance in that domain, but in that but in not in that dominant dominant domain. So it means our our delegation model is able to learn like to uh, build a delegation strategy based on the recommender's past performance. And here's some results. Uh, average CTR is affected by the CTR from the domain sports one because about 70% of the traffic is from that domain. And the recent recommender shows an overwhelming uh, performance in the domain sports one. So it, it suggests that we, we need to make a trade-off between exploration and ex exploitation. Um, because as we can see from the results, of uh, further exploration in that domain may not may not help because the recent, uh, recent recommender is, uh, has already shown a very good performance in that domain. And incorporating the two contexts helps to build a better delegation model and the heavy parameter and batch size matters. And our delegation model is able to learn from the past and choose the appropriate recommender. And uh, the second uh, evaluation result is from the response time. Um, so here's the response time from the uh, six baseline recommender. Um, the x axis uh, axis uh, is the response time, and y axis is the number of recommendation re uh, response. So. Um, we can see the response time varies among different recommenders. And here is the response time from our delegation model. Uh, so the, re the response time of the upper bound of the response time of our delegation model is, is determined by the recommender with the highest response time. And most of the uh, recommendation response can be given within 200 milliseconds. So, yeah, the time uh, the time is a little bit longer than the time limits required by the online scenario. But the thing is, uh, in the offline scenario, in order to 
like to reduce the variation time uh, up to 1,000 recommendation requests are sent with the multi thread at the same time. So it means in the online scenario, the response time would be shorter because uh, our recommender do not need to deal with so, so many recommendation requests at the same time. Um, and as for the catalog coverage, um, here's the catalog coverage from the three, uh, from the uh, six uh, single recommender. Um, the, we can see the recent uh, algorithm has the high, highest coverage up to 99% uh, in all three domains. Because uh, the each time a recommendation request come, the recent recommender would recommend the most recent requested news articles to the to to the current user. So basically, it would recommend uh, all news articles that the users have uh, users have interacted with, and the catalog coverage of the four popularity based. Uh, uh, recommender is much lower than the recent best recommender because for those popularity best recommender, the recommendation is from from a relatively small data set. And uh, when we look at the coverage from the context pre-filtering and context modeling model, uh, we can see regardless of the context uh, contextual batted algorithm use the the catalog coverage in the sports domain still uh, remains uh, also remains very high. Uh, this is due to the fact that our delegation model is able to learn that the recent uh, recommender performs good in that field, and uh, if the delegation model chooses the uh, uh, recent recommender most of this time, the the car catalog coverage would also increase. So from that, we we think that um, uh, based on the catalog coverage, we can also have some clues, uh, a few clues about what recommenders is chosen during the recommendation. And one interesting is is that when we look at uh, algorithms. Uh, which shows the best performance when we got, when, when measured with CTR, we found that um, the catalog coverage uh, of that of that recommender is also very high, and you can um, I don't know whether you can remember or not, but you can see here the click recommender shows the highest performance in the Kesta domain. And uh, that when looking at its coverage, the coverage is pretty low. But the recommender also shows uh, the, a very good performance in that domain, but the uh, uh, coverage uh, becomes higher. So it means that the recommender is able to benefit from both uh, recommender with the high with higher CTR and also recommender with higher uh, catalog coverage. And so here's some discussions. Recent uh, recommender has the highest coverage up to 99% in all the three domains. Uh, catalog coverage of the four popularity best recommenders are much lower, especially the click and popularity. Uh, category best recommender because for those recommenders the the data set the recommended data set is even smaller. And the catalog coverage is always high in the domain sports one because our delegation model is able to learn that recent uh, algorithms shows the best performance in that domain and some delegation model benefits from recommender with high CDR and also high coverage. And for our lab task, we evaluate our recommender in a one uh, in a two week time period, uh, with the delegation model built from offline. And the challenge is uh, because of the low data volume, uh, our delegation model built uh, online is now able to update, 
and also uh, so we we built a delegation model of, uh, from offline scenario um, but another problem is in the online scenario uh, we found some recommendation requests from uh, new publishers uh, from that publishers and that busy burning daughter uh, publishers but 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 this publishers is this publisher is now included in the offline data set so for this we set up a fallback recommender to uh, to serve the recommendation request from that domain and uh, we can see from the table that our detection model uh, performs slightly better than the simple base, uh, than the baseline recommender, which is a popularity based recommender. And here's our conclusion. Um, uh, the delegation model based uh, contextual banded uh, algorithms are able to update continuously with user's feedback and chooses appropriate recommender for the incoming recommendation request with the purpose to maximize overall CTR and uh, incorporate, incorporating more context can help to build a better delegation model. Uh, two types of context domain and user domain impressions can be used uh, for the for building the delegation model. Uh, they can be extracted directly from the incoming recommendation request. And <coughs> two different types of delegation model. Uh, delegation model based on context pre-filtering and context modeling model are proposed based on how context is combined with the banded algorithms. And the delegation model is feasible to run online. So for our future work, we like to like to combine more contexts. Here we only use two different types of contexts, but in the future we would like to combine more contexts, such as some uh, like combine contexts with some temporal informations, and and to combine more recommender to re to add more recommenders into our recommender pool and. Uh, redefine. We can also redefine our reward. So, from the company, from the view of the company, sometimes they care about revenues. So, instead of like uh, defining the the rewards as clicks, we can also define the rewards as uh, as revenues from the clicks in order to maximize the final revenue. Uh, Received from the uh, received from the news clicks, and and further we would like to focus more on the evaluation part. So in the news real challenge, uh, for one thing is we have few ideas about how the news articles would be shown to the users. So news articles can be shown in that format or in that format and sometimes users have some latest articles by their hand so all this all this part would uh, influence users selection on the recommenders and and for the last thing we like to evaluate our recommenders on a evenly distributed offline data set so that's all of my presentation thanks for your attention